Hey there, comic book fans. I'm back from the comic shop this week. I got to go on a Wednesday this week. Um, pretty big week for me. I got nine comics. That's actually two more than I expected because my comic shop uh, guy tracked down a copy of Hillbilly number two for me. Um, I think he said he got this... Uh, he went to the Baltimore Retailer Summit and stopped at some stores along the way. And one of them had a copy of uh, Hillbilly number two. So I got this along to go along with my first issue, and uh, now I'll have to see when issue three comes out. I think issue three is supposed to be out soon, but uh, happy to get this. I know they've been hard to find. The second printings of them are coming out, but uh, I don't need them now since I've got uh, one and two. My second surprise was uh, I picked up a shelf copy of Frank Cho's Skyborn from uh, Boom Studios. What's this? Issue one of five. I wasn't, uh, I didn't have this on my pull list or anything, but I think it was, it was only after that, uh, the Wonder Woman cover fiasco stuff that happened that I even heard that he had a new comic coming out. I figured I'd give it a read. I've always liked Frank Cho's artwork. Uh, but he doesn't do, you know, but he, since he mostly does uh, Marvel and DC stuff, I don't, I haven't bought a lot of Frank Cho stuff. I think the last Frank Cho thing I had was um, the Shanna the She-Devil Collected Edition. I have no idea what this is about. Um, maybe a spy with a sword? I don't know. He's in a suit jacket. But uh, give this a read. See if it's in th there was also a couple of, there was like three other number ones this week, which if I had the money for them, I would have bought a few more, but uh, this one made it onto the list. And we continue with Howard Chaikin's Midnight of the Soul, our post-World War II story about a guy who has been drunk since the end of the war in the late 40s it is now, trying to find his wife who... They don't even like each other anymore, but uh, she's still his wife. She's, she's trying to find out where she is and what happened to her. She ran away at the end of the first issue. And he's tracking her down in the sleazy world of late 40s Times Square. He actually punched someone. Last issue. I remember calling him an inaction hero because he really wasn't... Uh, he was really just tooling around on his motorcycle trying to figure things out. Um... So we'll see. Like I said, I'm I'm still not exactly sure where this is headed, but I'm I'm enjoying the ride. It's a nice story. A nice. Uh, I like period pieces. I like history. So getting a look at the lushly illustrated uh, 1940s New York City is kind of interesting. There we go. Midnight of the Soul, issue number four, and now we have Paper Girls number nine. Up to issue nine already. I have to say I've been very much enjoying Paper Girls. Uh, normally I hate time travel stories because they make no sense and they often contradict their own rules. But i got to say, we, we've got three different versions of the same character. And it doesn't bother me in the least because the story is just so zany. There's two versions of the character. And the one on the cover I think is the third version, or maybe she's the original version. The girl with the... I think the girl with the specialized backpack is the third futuristic version of the character. There's a futuristic version of the young girl. There's the young girl and her, her 2000... This is her 1980s self. This is her 2016 self. And I think the other one is her slightly past the 80s in the future self. So the story has just been nutty. Well done. It's got a nice, I mean, it's it's tough to describe for me, Paper Girls. It's just got a nice uh, a nice feel to it with the artwork and writing that kind of captures a, captures the characters nicely, captures a little bit of nostalgia, and uh, makes you go, what the heck is going on here? So there you go, Paper Girls number nine. Here is Revival number 42. Once again, I'm not exactly sure what the last issue of Revival is going to be. Um, 48, maybe? But things are uh, getting more action-oriented in this. The whole reviver of revival town, the military's uh, kind of putting its thumb on it. People are trying to escape. People are trying to figure out what's going on. And sort of the, the slow burn action 
of most of the series, except for the part that was set in New York City for four or six issues, has uh, turned to fast action. There we go. There's clunk, so I'm getting hit in the head with a gun. But I've, man, hard to believe been 42 issues of this. Uh, I've been, you know, buying it since issue one, and time passes now, doesn't it? But Revival's been good. Uh, Har- A Rural Noir by Tim Seeley and uh, Mike Norton. I mean, you probably can't jump on this now, but uh, grab the trades if you're interested in it, because it's a, it's a nice story. And it looks like we've got another issue of The Walking Dead, The Whisperer War, part two of three, by good old Kirkman, Adler, Guadiano, and Rathburn. Of course, we all know The Walking Dead. Uh, they're at war now with the Whisperers. Negan's on their side, I guess. I don't want to go too far ahead. Oh, there's some zombie action. We'll just show you that, because I don't want to spoil anything, because it's easy to spoil The Walking Dead, unless it's one of those old talking issues, but it doesn't look like it. don't want to spoil anyone dying for you. But I have to say, um, I saw there's there's an alternate cover to the, this series, uh, six Art Adams covers that all interlock, and I've seen them. I've seen them at the comic shop. They look really cool. Um, if I was into alternate covers, I'd buy them, but instead I just, you know, downloaded a JPEG of the cover itself, and that's good enough for me. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll put them all together digitally and look at them on my computer screen. I don't need to own the comics since I, I already have Walking Dead 158 right here, but check out those. If, even if you don't see them in your local comic shop, go online. They, they've published them all, all the, um online and whatever comic book site all the art adams walking dead covers they're really neat to look at he's done a he did a great job you know jamming in all that uh, art adams detail into very kind of busy covers each one starring a character though so walking dead always good check out Art adams covers and next we have the beauty number 10 nice all blue cover um the first story arc was all about the cops hunting down what the beauty the, the beauty is this disease you catch that is an STD that makes you beautiful and there were no side effect there were some minor side effects to it but being beautiful kind of uh made all the minor side effects better until 3 years into the disease people started exploding so <laughs> they were trying the first story arc was the cops and conspiracies and why people are exploding then they had a then they decided to explore some of the other stories about how the beauty has affected people's lives. There was a done in one for that, which was really good and now this one is the third part to the story about a, a i th- um I thought it was a it, it was about a man who um always felt like a woman, and I thought the beauty actually transformed her into a woman. But then it turned, at least that's what I thought from the first part of the story. But then the second part of the story, we found out she had an operation to do that. But she still looks like a beautiful woman because of the beauty. So I, I was a little confused about it, what exactly, how exactly that happened. Maybe they'll clear that up more in this issue. But mostly the story is about her. She became a criminal. She was like a, an orphan, became a criminal, and involved with this criminal organization. But now everything's fallen, fallen, to, fallen to hell in a handbasket because... Uh, her, the, you know, she was kind of a low-level sort of criminal organization, and they're kind of cleaning house of her and all her family of of criminal friends. So, uh, this issue could be a very sad one for her and us. Uh, we'll have to see. But check it out. The like I said, the the last three issues have been a really interesting sort of crime story. Good stuff. And next we have Drifter. What issue number is this? Fourteen. Things have uh, heated up in this, too, as uh, the aliens and the humans have started fighting each other. There's the aliens. We still have no idea what the aliens want, or really what this planet is that they're on. That's some nice artwork. More of them than I ever would have figured. I don't know why I read that in sort of a Pepperidge Farm Remembers voice, but I did. So this this is still... the There's, there's still a lot of mystery to... Uh, drifter going on um but the plot has started moving a well i don't know if it's the plot it's uh, it's uh, there's been more action in the last few issues uh, but i've liked it since the beginning i've liked the inactive issues i've liked the active issues it's all good stuff 
Not quite sure what that guy is with the kid. That, that just reminds I This one's not too bad, but I think Image has a cover problem. They've got a lot of covers that I look at, like the stuff for Manhattan Projects and East of West, where there's a lot of... They get all designy with a lot of blankness that I don't think really pulls me in and doesn't really pull... I don't know how... I don't know how many people see some of these image covers and go, oh, I have to have that comic. So, um, I think image could do some better covers. But, uh, like I said, this one's not too bad. But I'm still, I'm, I'm not sure who this cover is going to attract because it doesn't really say anything. It doesn't really... I, I don't know how intriguing that cover is. I mean, it's, it's, it's a nice image. It's okay. But if you were, like, just going through the stands looking for a comic to buy, would you buy this one because of the cover? I don't know. I don't even know if I'd pick this up because of the cover, just off the shelf. So, I'd like to see some better covers from Image, uh, but that's just me wanting my druthers. Oh well. The final thing we have is Kill or Be Killed, number two. I liked the first issue, but I'm, but there's still a lot of question marks about the story. Um, this guy right here, for some reason maybe because of a demon, maybe because he's crazy, has to kill one person a month, one bad person a month. How he's going to find bad people, I don't know. I guess they'll find him. Man, I love this Sean Phillips artwork. I think he does an excellent job. Uh, Brubaker and Phillips, I've, I've been, you know, you've heard me talk about them all the time. I've been following these this team for years and years and years. Even before there were Brubaker and Phillips. I think Sean Phillips was inking some stuff when I first saw him. And Brubaker was writing some stuff with someone else on other things. But on that Grifter series. But anyway. Once again, this is a this, this cover's okay. I mean, at least it's got some emotion to it. Guy with a gun. But still, I'm, I'm not sure who that's going to attract. He said it's better than a better than a lot of the covers I've seen, but uh, I don't know. I I, I wonder if, uh, if if these covers are really attracting anyone. Like I said, that's sort of a noirish, old time illustration. So like I said, I, have, I have no problem with it, but I, I somehow I just wish they were more interesting to get even more people interested in them. One last thing I wanted to show you was uh, I got this back on my. Uh, Christmas haul. I think I showed this to you. I finally finished reading it. It's Bacchus Volume 1. Nice and big. I have to say this really, really was good. It really, really... I mean, th this is all the Bacchus stories. Or does, does it tell us what they are in the back? Nope, it's not in the back. But uh, it's a lot... A first half... There's, there's another book this size with Bacchus stuff. I mean, this is... Uh, let me check the page. Five, over 500 pages. And I had read some Bacchus on and off over the years. I had never collected it regularly. I read some of the stuff at Dark Horse Presents, read some issues here and there of it. But I have to say, it's even better than I thought it was. It's just stories of Greek myths and some of the Greek heroes who have survived. And to this time, not many of them have. Uh, what's it? The Iboil Kid killed everyone on Zeus. I mean, killed every killed Zeus and everyone on Olympus years, you know, thousands of years ago, and stole their powers. But some of the gods are still alive, and some of the old characters who like took power from gods are still alive. And it's just a inter. I mean, the, it's hard to describe Bacchus because it's just such a sprawling story. But it's mostly about this guy right here, Bacchus, the god of wine. So if you're looking for an interesting read uh, of a lot of stuff, check this out. Finally, we'll give you a look at my background artwork. This is some more of my dreams of things work. I've been working on a lot of these lately. Um, got some of them worked up in color. These ones I was just doing. Uh, they'll be color eventually, but I figured I'd show you the black and white while I had the chance. Uh, this is issue 27. Uh, sort of a Venus de Milo, no arms take with those old Greek statues who their arms fell off over the years, except in the rest of it just kind of weird, dreamy imagery. And another fella here with his crazy, liney hair and googly eyes and mouth not quite on his face. Once again, I'm just, 
I'm just enjoying. I think I've been wanting to live in a dream world lately because uh, I've been having a lot of interest in dreamlike imagery and these dreams of things covers. Even though I don't remember, I don't remember my dreams much. But anyway, I can make my own dreams during the day. <laughs> there you go. Little bit of lo little look at artwork for you, and you all have a good week out there.